Joe, um, if you look at the report, there's an acknowledgments page which says something about my being an author. Uh, but as I was thinking about it, that really is not credit I should claim. Anybody who knows how to cut and paste, all right, now we're official. Uh, anyone who knows how to cut and paste a document could have created this report. Uh, and I say that because our findings rest um, largely on the words of Bahrain's judges. In other words, we looked at verdicts that courts issued, um, and we let the words of those courts speak for themselves. Because really, they speak more powerfully than any analysis that we could undertake. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, flew in from New York this morning, and I don't know if my voice has, has fully arrived. Uh, the first category of cases we looked at are cases where people were prosecuted for, in essence, expressing dissent. By way of example, um, there was a prosecution of prominent activists that began in military courts during the 2011 crackdown. People were prosecuted for being members of the Coalition for a Republic. As the name suggests, that was a group of people who wanted to advocate for the establishment of a republic in Bahrain. According to the military court, that um, manner of activity constituted the commission of all sorts of crimes. Those defendants appealed their military court convictions to a civilian appellate court. By and large, the appellate court, civilian court again, upheld the convictions. Uh, for example, it said that the defendants were properly convicted of terrorism for two reasons. First, as the name suggests, the Coalition of the Republic uh, sought to remove the uh, monarchy as the form of government and replace it with something more democratic. According to the court, that goal in and of itself is illegal. The court also looked at the means that these individuals supposedly employed, and it said, well, you know, to convict someone of terrorism, you have to find that the person has used force. But when we say force, we don't necessarily mean violence or the use of weapons or that sort of stuff. Uh, rather, in the court's words, force may be exercised in other actions, such as organizing and leading popular demonstrations as a tool to pressure the government. Put differently, the court said, terrorism is realized in all means of moral pressure. Now, that novel jurisprudence, I guess, was something the court had to use because it made no findings that any defendant had been involved in any specific act of violence. But the result of that opinion is that almost all manner of opposition, which is going to involve, at least in theory, an attempt to exert moral pressure is illegal in Bahrain. There was another case that originated in military courts involving medical personnel who had been uh, charged and found guilty of various crimes in connection with activities at the country's biggest medical facility where there were large-scale demonstrations. Uh, a number of those defendants had convictions set aside by civilian courts, but some of them didn't. And those who didn't appealed to the highest court in Bahrain, the Court of Cassation. The Court of Cassation found that a number of the defendants were guilty of what it termed the crime of promoting the overthrow of the regime. Uh, and in particular, the court found that certain defendants had called for a transformation of the state's political system into a republic or constitutional monarchy and that changing the state's political system constituted the commission of a crime. Again, criminalizing any expression in favor of democracy. Uh, also in that case, and I suppose this would be funny if it weren't in the context of a criminal proceeding, uh, the court found that a nurse had been properly convicted for stepping on a photograph of Bahrain's prime minister. Um, that was not a large part of the opinion, but they made clear that indeed that was uh, an illegal act. We've seen similar cases that originated in civilian courts. Last fall, 50 people were convicted of being involved with what is known as the February 14th Coalition. Uh, the court said this group meant to change the country's constitution by, to use their words, uh, sowing chaos, engaging in violence, and the like. 
again, the interesting thing was that with one exception, the court did not find that any of the defendants had engaged it directly or indirectly in any act of violence. Uh, if you're wondering about the one exception, that was a defendant who the court said had scratched a police officer during his arrest. Uh, perhaps not the prototypical crime of, of terrorism that, uh, that we might think of. Uh, instead, what the court found these defendants had done were things like organize protests and write about them on Twitter, give interviews to the press, uh, and possess photographs of, of demonstrations. So again, the court um, is talking about classic tools of protest, classic tools of uh, opposition groups, and saying, in essence, that they are uh, impermissible. We've seen a, a new classification of crime um, become very popular lately, uh, and that is based on the charge of insulting the king. We asked Bahrain's attorney general to explain the, the nature of these charges. Uh, he wrote back to us, and I guess in an attempt to assure us that everything was being done properly, said, we don't prosecute comments if they are subject or arguably political criticism, we just prosecute comments if they're directed at the king's private life. Uh, the Attorney General did not say if prosecutors go to the king each time one of these comments is made and say, Your Majesty, were you actually insulted by that? Um, but the more important point probably is that in the cases we've seen, the statements at issue have nothing to do with the king's personal life unless you want to say calling for the king to step down from his position as king involves his personal life, which is probably not the, the best interpretation. We also look in the report at cases in which security personnel have been prosecuted for uh, the human rights abuses that Bickey documented in its report. Uh, and in particular, Bickey said there were 18 people who died as a result of excessive force or torture uh, during the months that, that it was examining, uh, called on Bahrain to investigate and, where appropriate, prosecute security personnel in connection uh, with those deaths. The government of Bahrain, at the end of last year, said that it created a special unit. It had investigated all of the deaths discussed in the Bickey report. Uh, had instituted certain prosecutions, some of which had resolved and others of which were, were pending. Uh, but that, in essence, it was um, keeping up with its obligations to, to implement that recommendation. Our review, again, of the words of Bahrain's judges in those cases suggests something uh, very different. Um, and there are a couple of different categories you can put these prosecutions in. First, cases where defendants were found to have committed what I think you would reasonably describe as horrific acts of violence uh, and who receive very light sentences. Uh, for example, Bicky found that a man named Ali Sakar was beaten to death um, in custody and then died as a result of what it termed torture. Prosecutors charged two police officers in connection with that death. Uh, the court found that, indeed, these two police officers had beaten the victim to death, and, in fact, that they had no cause to use any physical force at all. Uh, and some of the evidence presented was fairly compelling. One of the defendants said that his co-defendant had beaten the victim, including with a hose, until the co-defendant was utterly exhausted. Uh, there were medical reports that said the victim had blunt force contusions on just about every part of his body. Looking at this evidence, again, the court found the defendants had beaten the victim to death and then, in one sentence, pronounced uh, its finding that the defendants didn't intend to kill the victim and so they were just guilty of assault. Uh, they pronounced a 10-year term, um, which you know, admittedly is a, a moderately severe term, but an appellate court then reduced that to a two-year term. That two-year term, in fact, is the heaviest sentence that has been uh, pronounced as to any security personnel. Uh, and just by way of comparison, I was interested to note that if you're convicted of adultery in Bahrain, you can also get a two-year term, uh, just to give you a, a comparative sense of uh, the sentencing structure. There's a case um, 
that uh, Naziha, in fact, witnessed where an unarmed protester was shot at uh, very close range. Uh, Bickey found that this shooting was unjustified uh, and that the victim died as a result of, of excessive force. Prosecutors charged a police officer in connection uh, with that death. The interesting thing, though, is that the prosecutors did not call any witnesses who testified in a manner that would inculpate the defendants. In other words, the prosecutors only called witnesses whose testimony benefited the defendants. Ziha was called as a witness, not by prosecutors, but by the victim's family. And this uh, is a theme that we see in cases involving security personnel as well. Prosecutors bring charges and then essentially present no evidence upon which a conviction sh could be had. In the case that Naziha witnessed, the defendant was unsurprisingly acquitted. So these are the, the two themes that we see in the accountability cases. Uh, people found to have committed uh, horrible acts. Another example is uh, a police officer who was found to have shot a detainee twice with a shotgun from a meter away without any justification, and he ultimately received a six-month sentence. Then we have the cases where prosecutors bring charges but don't offer evidence that could sustain a, a guilty finding. At the end of the day, if you want to understand at its core the nature of how the justice system in Bahrain has handled these cases, just think about the fact that if you shoot a protester who's unarmed from a meter away, twice with a shotgun, and the protester dies, you get six months in jail. If you're part of a group that peacefully calls for the establishment of a republic in Bahrain, you get a life sentence. That encapsulates the nature of the problems that we're addressing in this report. Um, Naziha, as I mentioned, can speak in far more personal uh, and interesting terms than, than I can about these issues. Uh, so I will turn the floor over to her.